So hello, my name is Emily Harms. I'm the Associate Dean here at Rockefeller University, and I'm also the director of the Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program and help to oversee the Science Outreach Program. And we're here today um, because we're having the poster session for the end of the program for these uh, students that participated this summer. Uh, both of these programs run between seven and ten weeks, and students from high schools around New York City and colleges throughout the United States and even internationally come and spend time working in labs here where they really do hands-on research and experience science in a different way than they do in the classroom. They really get hands-on experience and ask the questions themselves, and they're asking questions that uh, people don't know the answers to. So they're questions that you're not going to find the answers to in textbooks or things that they learn in class. So today we have 74 students presenting um, posters about their work that they've done this summer. Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity for them to get immersed in science for the summer. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to mentor them and to uh, really nurture uh, the younger generation of students who are getting interested in science. I'm Ted Scovel. I'm the Director of Science Outreach at Rockefeller University. Um, and today's the day of our poster session. It's sort of the culmination of seven weeks of work of, for about 60 high school students and five high school teachers. Um, the students come here and they come from high schools actually all over the world, but mostly from the tri-state area. Um, and they're students from private schools and public schools. We have kids from the South Bronx and elite Upper East Side private schools, so really from all over. Um, we've had kids from Spain and Greece. Um, and all of them do what's called authentic science, which means they work in a lab with a mentor, one-on-one, -on -one, studying real science, uh, trying to answer questions that nobody knows the answer to. Um, and it's really exciting today because at the poster session, almost every kid has discovered something new, um, which is pretty amazing. I'm Elaine Katz, and I'm currently at the Ramaz Upper School. I'm going into 11th grade. This summer, I researched the nuclear pore complex, which is a complex that's embedded within the nuclear envelope and allows for the transport of macromolecules, such as mRNAs and ribosomes, to go across the nuclear envelope between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Specifically, we studied the two innermost layers of this complex, which are known as the transport channel layer and the adapter layer. I'm Christopher Chin from Hunter College High School, and my project was the generation of fluorescent protein expressing human stem cell lines. So briefly what my project was, was taking these stem cells, two stem cell lines, RUS1 and RUS2, human embryonic stem cells. What I did was I took fluorescent proteins and I integrated a DNA construct containing the fluorescent protein into the genomes of these stem cells. And these images demonstrate successful integration of the fluorescent protein heterogeneous expression originally before selection and clonal picking. So selection and clonal picking involves taking the cells and choosing the ones with the strongest fluorescence expression and the best characteristic ESL, ESC, embryonic stem cell morphology. And doing so makes the expression of the fluorescent protein more homogeneous. You go from a largely heterogeneous expression to more homogeneous. Hi, my name is Dan Garo. I'm a clinical scholar at the Rockefeller University. And this summer, uh, Leia Slayton and Daniel Pollock were my students, and they uh, developed a goniometer for measuring the angular and spectral dependence of scattered light off particles. The practical application of this is that it will help us detect melanomas non invasively on people's skin. And this means to replace biopsy with a non invasive optical imaging system. Hi, I'm Leia Slayton from SAR High School. And I'm Daniel Pollock from Roslyn High School, and I'll be starting at Yale this fall. We're from the Kruger Lab at Rockefeller, and we're working with our mentor, Dan Garreau, in the Lab of Investigative Dermatology. And basically, we're working on a project to try to distinguish, on the basis of optical properties, the scattering patterns of melanoma cells versus other skin cells, such as Langerhans cells, which have a very similar backscattering. And what we're trying to do is basically engineer this device that will be able to compare the two cell types on the basis of their optical scattering so that we can distinguish using confocal microscopy in vivo. 
Hey, um, I am Steven. I am from Grinnell College in Iowa. So this is my poster, uh, as you can see here. A subset of ABDB neurons are required for the female fly pulsing response during courtship. So my study has to do with the female receptivity, especially the female fly, in the our case, Drosophila melanogaster, of which, of which genes and which neurons are required for the female receptivity. Hi, my name is Isabel Udo, and I go to Hunter College High School. Hi, my name is Kiara Heinz, and I go to Horace Mann School. Um, so this summer, we're working in the Darnell Lab of Molecular Neuro-Oncology, and we're studying Fragile X Syndrome, uh, which is a neurological disorder that causes severe mental retardation. And a lot of um, children and adults who have autism also have this mutation. The difference is that it's monogenetic, so it only affects one gene in your body, which is the FMR1 gene, um, which produces this protein called FMRP, which is a translational repressor. And in patients or in people who have Fragile X syndrome, there's a mutation. It's a trinucleotide repeat, and it leads to silencing of the FMRP protein. Um, without it, there's no regulation of translation. Hello, I'm uh, Joseph Obiajulu. I'm going into the 12th grade at Union County Magnum High School in New Jersey, and I worked in the Brady Lab for genetically encoded small molecules this year. So, and I'll begin. Bacteria-derived compounds have served a huge importance in the pharmaceutical and medical industries. Between 1981 and 2006, 50% of all of our anti-cancer and antimicrobial drugs have come from bacteria. And inside of this, 60% of those have come from streptomyces. The way that we normally get these small molecules out is by growing up the bacteria in a lab and then extracting these small molecules. But there's a problem with that. Only 1% of all the bacteria in the world can be cultured in the lab. Hi, I'm Hannah Fagan, and I go to Paul D. Schreiber High School in Fort Washington. And I studied, can rhesus macaques, or macaca mulata, interpret the nature of conspecifics relationships? So rhesus macaques is a type of monkey. And some people think that because they have a very complex social hierarchy, and they understand different social cues, that they might have a theory of mind, which means that they might understand what other monkeys are thinking. Other research has suggested that the, instead they have a simpler form called behavior reading, where they interpret the behavior of another monkey, and then they use it as a social cue, and they know how to react from there. So my study was to evaluate to what extent the monkeys have this behavior reading capability. Hi, my name is Faye Osgood. I go to Staples High School in Westport, Connecticut. And I was studying the effects of the ketogenic diet. And this is a diet used to control epilepsy. Epilepsy is a seizure disorder in 1 to 2% of the population. The ketogenic diet is a dietary approach used to control epilepsy. And it's a low carbohydrate, adequate protein, and high fat diet. And it's unknown why this diet is effective. It's used to treat epilepsy and ref ep refractory epilepsy in children. So I started out by putting 20 mice on the ketogenic diet and five mice on a standard chow diet as a control group. I monitored their caloric intake and their weight percentages just to, um, just to see if the mice were responding positively to the diet. And with the weight dropping and stabilizing in the ketogenic diet fed mice, that it showed that they were responding positively to this diet. I'm Günter Blobel. I'm a professor here at Rockefeller University and uh, very happy to be at the poster session of all of our interns today. And uh, I'm really surprised about the quality of the work and the range of the people that we have from high school teachers to college undergraduates to high school students. So we have um, from 16 year old to 30 year olds, right? Uh, all interested in learning um, science um, at the bench. At the book, you know, they, it's, it's easier, but to do experiments is a little bit more difficult. And I think it gives people an idea what uh, the life of an experimental scientist is.